We are talking parenting now, and although we want our kids to be aware of our environmental concerns, how do we gently introduce them to this quite serious topic without worrying them? Joining us today on the Anmum Pedia Pro 3 Coffee Group is educator Lisa Shardy and Damon Birchfield from Eco Matters. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Absolute pleasure to have you here. We've already been talking off air about all the things that we can do. Uh, Lisa, what's a good way to raise the topic? Mm. So I feel like kind of appealing to the child's imagination is a really good way to introduce this kind of stuff because yeah we don't want to lay them down with too much heaviness um, too, too young in their lives so um, appealing to their imagination like um, what is the kind of world that you dream to live in um, what if we didn't have all this beauty around us you know what if it, it all died <laughs> what would what could we do what is the change that um, you could you could be in the world basically so um, you know harvesting that natural curiosity and wonder mm. that they have um, working with that because their vision is never going to be oh I want to go to a beautiful beach full of rubbish that's no, never going to be a thing is exactly, it? exactly. Um, Damon what are some of the things we can change at home well, I think there's lots of things but the main message I think is just making sustainable behavior very normal uh, and something the whole family does mm. so it's just normal things like we take reusable bags when we go shopping and we don't need to use plastic bags mm. uh, turning the tap off while we're uh, brushing our teeth it's something that's so simple mm. saves water and then just explaining you know why yeah. it's the kind of uh, joining up the dots for children so that they understand that water doesn't just come out of a tap yeah mm. it or just turn the tap off full sourced. stop that's mm. quite good true sometimes <laughs> I come home it's like has that tap been on all day I think it might have been um, but well that's the thing isn't it they don't they understand that it actually comes from somewhere it's not just coming from a, as an endless resource mm. exactly mm. And that is really important. Um, Lisa, many of our kids are growing up mm. in cities these days. Yeah. I mean, are, are there some ways that we can help them get a little bit more back to nature? Yeah, definitely. So um, in most places that I've seen in Auckland and throughout the rest of the country, there's um, beautiful botanical gardens or there's reserves or parks um, or, you know, you're never that close, uh, sorry, never that far from the forest or the beach. So um, seeing if we can, as a family, maybe cut down on some screen time and instead using that time to go out um, into the forest and you know running barefoot climbing a tree um, touching the bark on the trees you know how does it feel what does it smell like um, basically just exploring the senses I think it's um, super important um, yeah just as a family doing that together it is and when mm. they're very little that can be easy to do because mm. you can grab their screen time mm. a bit easier but when they get older it actually yeah. is a, an active thing you have to really try and yeah. fit into the life don't yeah. you yeah. you think being in nature will be a normal thing but it's yeah. not going to be for this next generation yeah, totally. what if your children Damon, are simply not interested in maybe growing veggies or looking at trees I mean how do you engage them uh, well, I, I, I guess thinking about that, it's, it's just about making it fun um, and the children will have natural curiosity and so you've just got to do the things that naturally make, you know, they're naturally interested in and I would suggest if it's fun for you also as a parent it's going to be fun for them. Mm. Um, so it's not just really about growing trees, it's just about, it, it, as I say, it's just about doing a whole lot of things around the household that support um, sustainable outcomes. Mm. A very simple thing to do is, you know, put aside all your food scraps, collect them, and, and invest in a, in a worm farm. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> and, you know, that's something that's really fascinating, and, and, and you can. And, and watching the end product of, of something that you can actually use on the garden and so on that started off as kitchen scraps. Who couldn't be fascinated fascinated in that? Exactly. You know? mm. And I, I tell you what, something really cool I saw the other day, uh, something called plogging, which you could do with children, which is <laughs> quite, jogging and plocker, which means to pick up. And so you go running, but you pick up rubbish on your way. Isn't that the best thing? That's Love perfect. That. It's really cool. And of course, obviously, we're going to have to lead by example by starting these cooking groups too. Oh, that's really good advice. Thank you both very much for joining us. And we do need to make sure our kids are very aware of the environment there, yes. and so it stays beautiful. Yes. That's um, right. Lisa and Damon, thank you very much. Right. Coffee Group is brought to you by Ann Mum PD Pro 3, the only toddler milk with no added sugars. If you have any worries that you would like addressed by our parenting panel, message us on the cafe Facebook page. And one contributor will win this cool ebook from Ann Mum that allows you to record your voice reading the story. Have a very, listen to this. Sweet dreams, Mike. Here's a special bedtime story from me, just for you. So that's my next job. I'm going to be reading kids' books because that's me. What do you want from Mike?